Olá pessoal, boa noite, tudo bem? Para todo mundo que está assistindo a gente aí. Sete e meia, horário da abertura da Semana da Engenharia Biomédica do Inatel, na sua nona edição. Muito obrigado para todo mundo que está nos acompanhando nesse momento. Hoje vai ser uma noite super especial, que nós vamos ter aí uma série de pessoas, personalidades envolvidas nessa fala. Tanto o diretor de Inatel, o coordenador do curso de Engenharia Biomédica e a presença do Zec, que ele vai fazer a ilustre apresentação dele, contando um pouquinho a experiência ah, de um engenheiro biomédico nos Estados Unidos. Então, eu gostaria de agradecer a todo mundo que está aqui participando. Estamos dando início oficialmente, então, nesse momento, a Semana de Engenharia Biomédica do Inatel e ao Bio Challenge. Para aqueles que ainda não conhecem a nossa programação, podem acessar no site da semana, basta digitar no Google, Semana de Engenharia Biomédica do Inatel. Lá nós temos as instruções para todo mundo que quiser participar e acompanhar os eventos, assim como o Bio Challenge. O Bio Challenge ele vai ter a missão de fazer um hackathon, uma dinâmica para que o pessoal possa interagir e compartilhar soluções em saúde e ainda estamos com as vagas abertas, tá bom? Então quem quiser ainda pode acessar lá que até hoje as vagas para o Bio Challenge vão estar abertas. Gostaria de avisar também que nós contamos com a tradução simultânea dessa apresentação que o Zé que vai fazer na sequência pelo Gustavo Alencar e eu gostaria já de agradecer muito ao Gustavo pela disponibilidade é, de ele ter vindo aqui participar junto com a gente. O Gustavo ele já não trabalha mais como professor de inglês e, e tradutor, mas ele disponibilizou de coração aberto aí para poder participar desse momento. Eu agradeço demais a sua disponibilidade, Gustavo. Então quem quiser acessar a, a, esse, a esse vídeo, né? daqui a pouco o Zé que ele vai falar em inglês, Basta acessar ali no link da página do, do, da Semana da Engenharia Biomédica, bem como no YouTube, para vocês poderem ver o link traduzido, tá bom? Gostaria de aproveitar esse momento para agradecer os apoiadores do evento, como a Sbeb Jovem, a Beclin e o CREA de Minas Gerais, e também aos patrocinadores, a Master Medical e a Orbis, que sem vocês isso aqui não seria possível a gente fazer tantas coisas e tantos, gerar tanto movimento é, de conhecimento e de, e de inovação aqui. Então, gostaria muito de agradecê-los. Gostaria de agradecer também a VMIX Easy Stream Brasil. Ah, ela é uma empresa focada em ajudar você a alcançar excelência em transmissão de eventos ao vivo por meio da melhor ferramenta de live stream da atualidade. Então, toda essa transmissão está sendo feita pela VMIX. Agradeço muito a vocês também pela parceria. A campanha de doação de sangue, que também nós estamos apoiando nesse evento, né? a SEB ela tem essa tradição de não ser somente um, um hub de conhecimento, de contatos, mas também para apoiar causas, e uma das causas que nós estamos apoiando esse ano novamente é a campanha de doação de sangue, que poderá ser feita durante todo o mês de agosto no Hemocentro de Pouso Alegre, e as demais informações vão estar no nosso site, tá bom? E ao longo da semana nós vamos mostrar um vídeo para vocês, para que vocês possam acompanhar aí como fazer a sua doação. Nós também tam estamos fazendo uma campanha de arrecadação, ela poderá ser feita, né? essa campanha de arrecadação ela poderá ser feita por dinheiro ou através da Grife da Engenharia Biomédica. Então, se vocês não conhecem, acessem o arroba grife underline engbiomédica no nosso Instagram. O pessoal tem ali vários itens de roupa, caneca, tirante, uma série de coisas. E todo o lucro dessa, da Grife vai ser revertido também para as campanhas de arrecadação e as campanhas sociais. Tá bom? Lá vai estar descrito também quais vão ser os locais que vão receber essa doação. Pessoal, existe um grupo no WhatsApp... Uh, esse grupo do WhatsApp nós utilizamos ele para jogar charadas, sorteios, então quem quiser acessar, basta ir na página da, da Semana de Engenharia Biomédica, lá vocês conseguem pegar o link para entrar nesse WhatsApp e durante todos os dias do evento, começando a partir de amanhã, nós vamos fazer, jogar algumas charadas e quem acertar pode concorrer a vários prêmios uh, ao longo dessa semana. Então acompanhe todas as palestras, ao longo das palestras vocês vão ter as dicas de como acertar as charadas, e eu recomendo muito que os prêmios são muito bons, tá? A gente tem várias coisas, tanto da Grife, quanto outros itens também, para serem sorteados lá. Nesse momento agora, pessoal, eu já vou, não mais, sem, sem fazer as delongas, eu vou chamar aqui para o palco, as pessoas vão estar envolvidas nessa palestra, eu gostaria de só de avisar que a partir de agora vamos começar a misturar um pouquinho de português com inglês, para que a comunicação fique fluida para todo mundo, tá bom? Então eu vou chamar aqui o diretor do Inatel, professor Carlos Nazaré, o coordenador do curso de Engenharia Biomédica, o professor Fabiano, e o Zec representando, então, a Engenharia Biomédica pela CIMS. Tá bem? Então, nesse momento, pessoal, muito obrigado por todos vocês, pela a apresentação de todos vocês, pela disponibilidade de todos vocês. Thank you so much, Zec, for coming here, for having this moment with us. Your speech is going to be very important for everyone. Thank you so much. And I'd like to ask... Professor Nazaré, uh, for introducing himself and tell a little bit about this week. O senhor fica à vontade para poder falar, tá bom? Obrigado, Felipe. 
É um prazer estar aqui mais uma vez, em mais uma semana biomédica. Né? Queria parabenizar você, toda a sua equipe, o professor Fabiano, por todo o cuidado com o Cruzeiro de organizar mais uma semana de engenharia biomédica do Inatel. Todos os anos nós temos aí sempre a colaboração de profissionais, de parceiros, né? empresas parceiras que patrocinam o nosso evento. Mas esse ano a gente tem uma magnitude muito grande, muito maior né? do que nos demais anos. Nós temos aí muitos profissionais envolvidos, como avaliadores, como mentores dos eventos que a gente está promovendo e, consequentemente, da interação que a gente quer né, fazer com que todos tenham a possibilidade de vivenciar durante mais essa semana é, de engenharia biomédica. Então, nós temos também uma campanha social muito importante, né, que ajuda um aspecto de suma importância né, para toda né, a rede é, de saúde, para a rede hospitalar da nossa região. Sem falar que nós vivemos num momento de pandemia, onde muitas vezes a impossibilidade de sair de casa, a impossibilidade de se deslocar no dia a dia e até mesmo o receio de comparecer aos ambientes de saúde, nos traz aí uma grande dificuldade por parte dos hospitais no que diz respeito ao atendimento daqueles que necessitam de cirurgias, necessitam né, de um aparato é, é, médico junto com o material necessário que é vital né, em um momento tão importante como esse né, que a gente está vivendo. Então fica aí meus parabéns a toda a equipe organizadora né, por pensar não apenas no aspecto técnico, mas também pensar de forma muito criativa nos aspectos sociais que a gente pode vir a colaborar durante a semana de biomédica do Inatel. É, eu fico também muito contente, gostaria de parabenizar pela grade, pela programação. A programação está ótima né, e traz para todos os profissionais que têm interesse de conhecer e de participar do mercado de engenharia biomédica, uma visão bastante plural de tudo aquilo que pode né, ser descoberto e pode ser trabalhado dentro de um mercado com tantas perspectivas e com tantos horizontes como é o mercado né, de engenharia biomédica, de engenharia clínica em nosso país. Vale a pena lembrar que nos últimos anos né, a gente teve um avanço bastante grande na medicina pela colaboração de diferentes áreas, né, na área de desenvolvimento químico, na área de desenvolvimento farmacêutico, na área das técnicas voltadas né, para as cirurgias que consequentemente ganharam né, novas nuances à medida que os estudos vão avançando, mas indubitavelmente o que nós tivemos de colaboração das tecnologias da informação e comunicação para a criação de novos equipamentos eletromédicos que trazem aos profissionais de saúde uma visualização muito mais precisa daquilo que realmente está acontecendo no organismo humano é sem dúvida o que nos coloca numa situação bastante disruptiva e com a possibilidade de avanço muito grande nos próximos anos. E é dentro dessa linha que está o nosso curso de engenharia biomédica, é dentro dessa linha que está a nossa carreira, e é dentro dessa linha que justamente essa semana trabalho no intuito de mostrar né, a grandeza de um setor que mais do que pujança econômica ao redor de todo mundo, né, traz um benefício muito grande, onde a gente consegue alinhar o uso da tecnologia para o benefício, né, para o bem-estar né, de toda a população. Então fica aqui meus parabéns a todos os organizadores, todos os participantes né, que tão carinhosamente prepararam essa semana. And I want... Uh, uh, speak for Mr. Zek because it's very important for us the international participation in this moment. Mr. Zek, thank you very much for your attention, for your time. I think that our community, our students will learn very much with you. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Thank you so much, Professor Nazaré. <laughs> Uh, obrigado por suas palavras, professor, e realmente nós temos aqui a comissão, Eu gostaria de fazer um destaque, porque isso tudo só está sendo possível por conta de alunos brilhantes que estão aqui por trás, estão vendo, está aqui Marcos, Leandro, lá em Arthur, está Bruce, aluno que já não é mais aluna, mas está apegada ainda e continua colaborando bastante, então, ao, e eu não vou sem dúvida... Backstage? Nome... É, exato. E existem muitos alunos aqui que as coisas só estão acontecendo por conta de, do suor deles, da garra deles e do brilho que cada um deles tem também. E ao longo da semana a gente vai fazendo aí os, os agradecimentos nominais a todos eles. Muito obrigado, professor Nazaré. Agora eu convido o professor Fabiano para dar a sua palavrinha. É, boa noite a todos, né? É com muito prazer que a gente abre mais uma semana da Engenharia Biomédica do Inatel. 
é, que certamente será a melhor semana que a gente já conseguiu realizar. Né? É, agradecer muito aí a comissão organizadora, composta pelos estudantes, pelo professor Felipe, pela engenheira biomédica Luma, que trabalharam aí arduamente né, para poder é, colocar em pé essa transmissão, para poder fazer essa transmissão tão brilhante que está sendo feita aí agora, com a participação do Zé. Né? É, agradecer também ao Gustavo, que se colocou à disposição para fazer aí a tradução simultânea. É, e mainly, uh, Mr. Zecker, thank you for participating. É, e os estudantes do Inatel e estudantes de outras instituições né, que participem do evento, né, que é, inter façam interações com, com, com os palestrantes, participem dos cursos, que foi um evento preparado para vocês. né? Então, é, todos os alunos né, do Inatel, de fora do Inatel, outros participantes da área de engenharia biomédica que estão assistindo a gente, é, que participem. Né? Um evento preparado com bastante carinho, pelos estudantes do Inatel, principalmente. Né? Então, desejo um bom evento a todos e não vou me alongar muito para deixar a palavra aí para o Mr. Zeca. Beleza, Fabiano. Muito obrigado, viu? Obrigado mesmo pelas suas palavras. E realmente vamos dar o start aí à grande semana da Engenharia Biomédica. So, at this moment, I'd like to call to the stage Zach. Zach, thank you so much. It's a, very, it's a big pleasure for us for having you here. Uh, and welcome to the 9th Biomedical Engineering Week of Inatel. I do remember the last time I've seen you, we were burning neurons for some solutions in Biomedical Engineering in Dr. Fenico's class. So <laughs> thank you so much for mm -hmm. your availability and for being here. Um, and it's, of course, also of course. Great, <laughs> it's also a great pleasure for us for having you here, telling us a little bit about the paths you've walked through during your career. And for those who are watching us, after Zach's presentation, we will have some Q&A time. So if you have a question, please chat on the YouTube's chat. And at the end, I'm going to like read your uh, questions for Zach and he can reply you all. So Zach, feel free uh, now to the stage is all yours and good presentation for you. And if you need any support, please let me know. So go ahead, it's your okay. Thank you so much. All righty, will do. Well, first of all, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again to uh, Felipe and his staff for having me here tonight to get the ability to speak to all of you. Uh, I understand, obviously, I'm speaking to a lot of students, so it's crazy to think that I was in everybody's ear uh, rather recently. It feels like it, it's been so long ago, but it was. It still just feels like again yesterday. Um, so, as Felipe said, I'm going to try to go through a little bit of my career so far. Um, kind of my uh, during school, a uh, little like ins and outs that I really liked, didn't like, as, as well as transitioning into the real world, uh, getting into professions, workforce, and kind of having the right mindset and kind of problem solving skills that I think should be important for students like yourself to hopefully then transition into a real world situation. So, uh, as Felipe said, I, uh, with him, graduated from the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Um, I initially had gone there actually for sports. It's kind of a, a little bit of a longer story, but um, the short end of it was I initially wanted to go to school for something medical. I uh, wasn't exactly sure what, whether it was medical school, um, nursing, physician's assistant, dentistry, whatever. Um, once I got the offer to go play ice hockey at um, Milwaukee School of Engineering, I had gone there and I never thought to myself I would want to do anything engineering related because I always just thought a lot more math, a lot more technical application, nothing really that I thought would be medically related. However, once I got in, it was something to me where I, I saw biomedical engineering. I did a little research on it, more understanding to it, and it was something that I really did actually want to give a shot. I really do like the maths. I do love the sciences. And again, I just wanted to try to give it a chance to think, okay, well, if it is a medical application point of view, I really do then want to try to pursue it and see what I can make of it, see where I can go from there. So while in my program, uh, I will say that a lot of the positives I do think that biomedical students really should take advantage of are those electrical engineering courses. The, uh, we had classes that were a little more, in, like, uh, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? a little more involved with like biomedical application. Also, you're just straight up electrical engineering. I mean, we had the basic one where you pretty much just you know, learn Ohm's law, voltage, resistance, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, current, thank you, know, thank you, current. Um, 
so from that perspective, it, it is amazing how, like, even when I got into my very first job, how all of my colleagues were just like, no, Ohm's law. I'm not sure. So it's, it is rather crucial just have that basic logical engineering fundamentals down. Um, one of the other big components of my pr uh, program that I really did like was towards the end of our program, we had a medical device class where we went in, our professor gave us the ins and outs of CT, MRI, ultrasound, x-ray, and geography. Um, and I really do think it was more than you'll ever know important, just because with the growing world we live in, medical devices, are, we're seeing them all over the place every day, every aspect of our lives. When it when we you know when it comes to to, to medical help and um, training and everything, so that class in particular was something that I thought was great. Um, the only thing I like about it was that it was of a once a semester course, and I really think that's something that that should be broken down into multiple courses over the course of whether it's your junior or senior year, because that in particular was something that when it's done, it is, like I said, vital for people when, for biomeds in particular, when you're getting into that workforce. So I thought that's something that I, um, that's like very crucial, very, very important to learn about. Um, so if you ever do have any of those courses, pay attention, um, really, really pay attention, get into it, understand how those things work, um, which is going to give you a big, uh, big jump start when you get into the workforce. Um, one of the things too, that I really did like about the program is as I'm sure Felipe can attest to, um, we had a thing called a senior design project where it was in, uh, we were in school today. I think they changed the duration of it now in school. It was about a two and a half year project. And, and the way it worked was, is you had about three to four kids per group. Um, within your program, and our professor tasked us with actually creating a device that could be implemented into a biomedical application real world. So we had to do the, like, it was initially we had to do all the research trying to find, first of all, an area of biomed that we found interesting. So for our group, we did biomechanics. And the area that we focused on was actually rehabilitation for people who had just gotten done with rotator cuff surgery. We discovered that most people who go through this particular type of rehab follow through at the absolute least. So we wanted to try to find a way to implement and make a device that would actually allow people kind of the encouragement to continue with the rehab, to go through it, ways to kind of track their progress. So what we did um, in the group, we had project manager, assistant project manager, and then we had in our group, we had two engineers. So it, it is a very real world scenario. I mean, you're going to have, you know, in your real, in, in your real life jobs, you'll have either a boss, project manager, somebody above you who is delegating assignments, going through research, making sure everybody's on the same track. You'll have the assistant manager who's answering up to the project manager, making sure notes are taken, making sure all the, all of the proper documentation's there. And then you had the two engineers who are doing those little like gritty sort of uh, researched looking for um, proper devices that we can Im incorporate, ways to make the project easier, et cetera, et cetera. So our device, like I said, was to help measure angles. Of, you could lift your arm from adduction to adduction when somebody's just doing it. It's just one, obviously, one exercise you can go through in, in rotator cuff rehab. Um, but the device was, it, you would wear it on your shoulder and we actually ended up using a goniometer that came out of a Wii nunchuck. And for those of you who might not know that what Wii is, um, I like, I think most people do, but the Wii, the Nintendo Wii, you have the two sticks, you know, play games with you used out of the nunchuck, which has the analog stick on it. We used a little, little goniometer in there because we knew that that obviously measured in three dimensions so we actually used that and then we had the help of a software engineer who actually converted those numbers then into real angles uh that would have been something that would have taken us probably four years if not more so we were very thankful that he was able to do it in about three months crazy enough as that sounds um and the project itself was it, it, the application it worked beautifully we actually um, our software engineer developed an app for us and what you would do is you would measure it first on your good arm get about a good 90 degree measurement and then transition over to your poor arm doing the exercises and it would go, okay, you've reached 20 degrees today, log it in the app, 
next day, next session, you get to 25 degrees, 30 degrees, and it would show that progression. And that was one of the, again, the vital things we wanted to do was to show these patients their progress. And, and like I said, the, the process itself was absolutely incredible because again, it, it, it gives you that re- even though it was our friends and you know wasn't obviously directly related to real world, it still just gives you that structure, that understanding that this is how it's going to be. You're going to go in as maybe an engineer, engineer one, engineer two. You're going to have people above you, assignments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, very great, great experience that I'm sure, as, as Felipe can attest to, it was it, it, it had its ups and downs for sure. But uh, it was a very good experience um, and, and something that I absolutely loved about the program. Um, but one of the biggest things I actually did uh, that I would say is a negative coming out of the program that we had was and I think a lot of us actually, a lot of my other fellow students attest to this sort of bit of our, our program. I really wish BE programs, or at least the one we did, would give you the option to kind of pick a career to go down once you sort of hit that, that third or fourth year, kind of getting towards the end of it. And what I mean by that is, is all of you, I'm sure, can, uh, can attest to at this point, biomedical engineering can give you, there's so many career paths that can be taken. I mean, even just here in the States, I mean, we're talking everything from medical devices, pharmaceuticals, research, design, going work, you know, university, biomechanics, going into med school even. Really wish they kind of allow kids to, for example, the class that I took about medical devices, had I picked a career path that focused on or even building of medical devices for a company of some kind, I wish then they could have that people could where you could take more classes that would relate to it and more classes that could be like something that you want to hit as a speciality out of school. Um, so they, they, the, the programs, because most programs, they try to get you ready for, for grad school, which, which there's nothing wrong with that. Kids, you know, you want to go for a PhD, lots of great stuff done research and everything going into grad school. So I don't want to like take kids away from doing that because by all means go for it. But at the same time, I'm sure there's plenty of students here who know that, you know, like me where more schooling is just more of a headache. So you really just, I really wish programs would kind of give you more of the option to sort of, again, go from, from speciality to, uh, area to area, subject to subject within the biomed program. Um, so again, with all that being said, uh, again, as a lot of you know, the biomedical engineering program, I do believe for a career standpoint, the best thing it can is to get a mindset that, that way approaching problems, going through, whether it's lab reports, um, exam, problem, whatever, whatever class it may be, it's that way we approach the problems that definitely helped me in my career up to this point and probably for the rest of my life. So the first I actually got right out of school was engineering technician at Siemens Medical Solutions. Um, it, it, it wasn't something again, right out of that I knew I wanted to, it was just, I, cause again, I was still more open just to trying to explore the program more, trying to explore medical engineering. So uh, at the job, at Siemens and what my job entailed was I worked for the quality install base team. So how it would work is a customer, for example, would call in to Siemens saying, Hey, I got an issue with X device. So we, the, the, the first level of people would take in the call. They would then into an investigation say, okay, this device is, is faulty. It's not working. It would then trickle down the line to another team and eventually it would get escalated all the way to us to where we would open up a full investigation into what happened. So send us back the part, we would then go into more diagnostic testing for this device. So backtracking just a little bit, what I would do is um, the devices I worked on were devices in angiography. So for those of you that might not be from angiography is the examination of x-ray blood or vessels carried out after the introduction of radio opaque substances. So typically, if doctors are looking to insert a catheter of some kind for somebody who might have blockage in an artery, any sort of um, underlying heart condition, they would use our devices 
to get an overall picture, find the blockage, go in, get a course of action, attack it, hopefully resolve for the patient and get them better. Um, what our team did in particular is when you think of a medical device, if you think of the entirety, whether again, MR, CT, whatever it may be, in this particular case, obviously angiography, what we focused on was you have obviously all of the, the big, you know, all the devices in the exam room, there's also all the post-processing PCs and hardware in the control room. That's what we focused on. So everything that involved the, the people in the scenes who might be trying to take pictures for the doctor, get certain angles, rotate images, you know, 3D, whatever it may be, we were focusing on that hardware and that software. So like I said, the part would eventually make its way into us. So when it came into us, we we would we basically got these massive PCs inside. It had every motherboards, graphics cards, whatever. We would take the initial complaint that the customer was saying. So, for example, if it may have been a PC it was having a boot problem, it wasn't coming up in the morning, system wouldn't boot up properly, all because of this one PC. We would then go through diagnostic uh, of all kinds, going through different stress tests from the PC programs itself. We actually, uh, I made my uh, first script that I would do that actually ran the PC through a boot cycle that I could let run for however long I wanted until almost failure. So it's a straight stress test. Um, I could run it through, I could test power supply voltage. We had parts in our lab where they were like goods. So I could take out, say, for example, we had a, a Copra board is what we called it. And it, it was big for the graphical interface when you're examining all these different images. You could, I could take it out, put a new one in, restart the computer, bring it up, and let's just say it, it worked perfectly fine. Well, then there you go. Kind of like a, a process of elimination sort of thing. Um, and again, it, it was fantastic because, again, in school, when, you, when they give you that mindset, because like the thing, you know, that that I, I didn't go to school. Nobody taught me about Siemens imaging equipment. No one's going to teach you GE, Medtronic, whatever it may be. So for me, I, I, I was coming in as no idea. I had to learn everything all over again, basically from scratch. But again, I emphasize program in the speed program that you guys go through is it's that way of thinking. It's the way of attacking a problem that I've never seen before. But knowing simple fundamentals, you can attack and be good to go. So one learn more about these devices, attacking the problems and trying to figure stuff out was no problem at all. So once we figured out the problem to do, then we moved to documentation. So I do a little side note for everybody who might not like writing up very long lab reports or any sort of assignments like that. Just letting you know they are very useful. They might not seem like it right now, but they will be, I promise. They uh, So again, so, so the way it would work is we would basically take our findings and we'd have to present them to the risk assessment team. So we had to write out, first of all, what the problem was, how we, the process that we actually went through to get to this conclusion of what the error was, and then report a way of how to solve the problem. So for example, a software issue we could, create what we call the charm that they could then implement into later builds. So the whole goal was the hopefully solution that it, again, hardware or software people could then implement into later uh, overall uh, devices that wouldn't, hopefully wouldn't have this problem or, or if it is this problem, it and at least have a, a way of fixing it. Um, and documentation skills, presenting um, everything, it's vitally important. Um, so, you know, like I said, lab reports might not seem fun now. Pre presenting things might not seem fun now. Take it seriously. Do the best you can. Learn from it because I guarantee you it will help you at some point, in, some point down the line in your future. Um, one of the other things that nobody had taught me that as I was getting to the end of my time, first, my first instance at Siemens that nobody teaches you. And I, it's just something that kids need to be aware of when entering the workforce is you could lose a job. So I, unfortunately through the closing of one of our branches and let me tell you, it's not fun at all. Um, it, again, it, it's just that it's life part of the workforce, part of the world, you know, it, companies can close down for any reason at any time. Um, 
But again, it's just something that I, I, I'm kind of glad I went through it because again, it is something that you, know, it, it, you can't be taught. You can't be taught that sort of. Uh, of so, was it terrible? Sure, but thankfully I was able to, to bounce right back. I did a couple uh, minor jobs. One of them was a, a biomedical technician at a hospital. If anybody is ever interested in working in a hospital, biomeds are very crucial. Um, it, just maintaining simple equipment I did for, for nurses, doctors, for everything from a, a, a patient thermometer all the way up to um, imaging equipment. We had guys who w worked in actual ORs while surgeries were being done, making sure that all the equipment's working properly. And let me tell you, I that couldn't be in a more stressful situation than that uh, when a patient's open up on a table and you have to make sure everything's working well for that. Um, again, it was a very great experience. I loved it, um, but I was able to actually, I got an opportunity to come back to Siemens Medical Solutions and I 100% took it just because I knew when I was there, the experience that I had, loved it, wanted to stick with it. So got the next opportunity. Now the job I currently have still Actually, if we go back to describing to you when initial error comes through and they call, the customer would call in, I'm actually now that first line of support for these, for these customers. And with that being the case, I now needed to actually learn the entire imaging system, still with angiography, but the entire system now. So this wasn't just control room PC anymore. I had to now adapt and learn how the C-arm rotated, when a potentiometer broke, when a tube went bad, flat detectors. Uh, we had system cabinets in the back with generators, um, motherboard. I mean, it, it, um, I had to expand my knowledge from like this to this in a matter of a couple months, basically. Um, benefit was that where I'm at actually here in the States, uh, I'm at Siemens North, like North American tech support headquarters. And just on our campus is a building that is designated strictly to a, a guys previously from the field who become professors who teach everything about Siemens systems. There's systems set up all throughout the building, walk into the classrooms and you can you know run tests on them, take them apart, put them back together. And I, I for about the first two and a half, three months of my job down here were me in a classroom. It was right back to school all over again. And this time, though, it was, I actually needed, I mean, not that people don't pay attention, but yeah, I'm sure kids, uh, you guys haven't paid attention. It's okay. I won't tell your professors. Um, but I actually had to, like, now really focus in because, again, when, when these errors were coming in from these customers, th this is happening live. Like, these, guys were, these, these customers that would call us, you know, they're saying, hey, I got a patient on the table. And this, for example, too hot is one of our, our biggest red flag errors that can come through, which means that that tube, that x-ray tube is overheating. And again, when you got a patient on the table, it is, it's like right there. You got to be sharp on it, ready to go, um, ready to give them a solution. So for example, in this, in this case, what I would do is um, when they would call in, I would simply say, hey all right, into the system right now, I can remotely log in to the system to see millis millisecond what this customer is doing. And, and I can then say, okay, all right, well, all right, I'm seeing you guys take an x-ray, take an x-ray. Okay, okay, there's the tube hot. Okay, looks like it's a temperature sensor issue. So I would recommend, hey, finish up this case, try to get through it. Um, after that, though, let's turn the system off. And then my new job is to dispatch an engineer out to help them. So what I would do then is to build up, to go into the log files, then build up an action plan saying, hey, all right, from the minimal knowledge that I have, I have the log files here, I can see that it might be a sensor issue, but it could be a lot of other things. With a with an x-ray tube we're talking, it could be the physical tube itself. Like I said, it could be that sensor, it could be the coolant in the system cabinet that could be low. It could be the cooler itself that's just not working properly. So I now have to create an action plan for an engineer and I have to give him almost a possibility that this, this error could be resulting from. So then when they get on site, they're like, okay, I can go through this, 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 all the way down the list. Um, and well, I really quick want to backtrack. My current job, actually, it's actually kind of a unique situation. So reference 
interesting before about you know customer calls in. In this instance, actually, the team that I'm that I'm I'm starting to actually become the head is called Guardian Support, where we actually a customer. I see like I monitor a board all day, all these different customer sites, and actually make the initial phone call. So, for example, you know you get your phones, laptops, gaming systems, whatever. So just imagine. Imagine you're using your laptop and all of a sudden you're noticing it's not booting up properly. You're trying to, you know, you can tell in the morning something's not right. So instead of you calling tech support, tech support would call you. And that's what we do. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. I love it. The The overall job itself, I think, is very helpful. I've had multiple customers at times where you call in and they're just very thankful that they're like, oh, we call in. And it just kind of gives you like a nice warm sort of feeling knowing that you're making a difference. And that's part, honestly, the part of the, the medical field that I really wanted to do. I wanted to, for example, with that tube hot air, I know for a fact, I'm like, hey, I don't want you guys to use this system anymore and wait for that engineer to get there. It might suck to put the room down, but that's what you got to do. Because my mindset is I don't want to have one of my friends or one of my loved ones on that table when that x-ray tube isn't working properly or if it could overheat and they're in the middle of a procedure and all and the whole system shuts down. So that's kind of the way that I look at it is, is I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm doing this to help others. I'm doing it because that's the point of the medical field. The medical field is you are finding ways to provide a service. And I'm obviously, again, it's not directly a doctor. You're not a nurse, you're, you know, you're not directly working with patients, but it, it that's the way I look at it. And that's the way I take it. And that's the way I think most kids should take it because again, that's what, that's what the medical field entails. Um, so again, like I said, the, the job I have at Siemens right now is something that I'm doing currently. Um, again, it, it, school never ends. You know, you're always learning new things, always going through new opportunities. And I think that's the biggest thing also that I want to emphasize the kids here as we, as I obviously am now towards the end of my, uh, getting towards the end of my overall career, um, at least just for this speech, hopefully not ever, um, is when, when you're in school and you're going through these lab or going through exams or, or, or assignment the professor gives you, it had kind of, I wish somebody had told me what I'm about to tell you guys. Go into every assignment, every lab, every exam you guys do and think of it as a real world experience. Think of it as a real world situation where you're working for your professor being in this case your boss and he's given he or she has given you an assignment to do and if you don't assignment properly if you don't give it the proper attention it needs your company might not do well and you all of a sudden you know you're you're missing this or that or or the company is now not as profitable as it would like because you're not doing your job basically so because in my situation for example if i if i slack off on one call or something or one action plan it could be the difference between that being fixed not getting fixed having to redispatch upset customer canceling contracts so the point i want to make again is really 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 think about it as real world think about it as okay i'm attacking it with this mentality attacking the problem and I'm getting it done for the betterment of myself as well as for the company. I mean, again, obviously still learning along the way. And another big point I want to make is for kids coming out of school, do not be intimidated when a company says need experience. Normally I, I go with this when I'm when I when I talk to to students everything. If a company says like five or more years needed experience, they're probably looking for somewhere around that then just that's just kind of what the role might entail. But I would say, even if you're looking and you see something that's got two, three years and you're just out of school, if for because like I said in the very beginning, and even still today, we have new devices coming out that I need to go take classes in a couple months to learn. You're always learning and you're never going to come out of school knowing exactly how Siemens is run, exactly how big medical device companies or pharmaceuticals are run. So, don't be afraid to just apply for that job. If it's got the levels of experience on there, worst case, they say no, move on. Um, but yeah, honestly, keep that level, keep that in mind. And honestly, like I said, as long as you continue to approach every problem you do, every lab you do with that, with that proper mindset, that proper problem-solving mindset, 
it is going to take you so much further in life than you can ever imagine. Because again, every day I get up now and I'm going into work, if there's something I come across, and there's plenty of days I come across problems I haven't even seen yet, but having that knowledge and having that way of thinking, it helps you tenfold. It takes, it, 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 it gives you that proper way of attacking a problem, going about it, and really trying to do the as you can to make sure which you can for your company. Um, so again, like I said, I think it's that mentality of all biomedical engineers is going to help you guys well down the line into your careers. Like I said, as much as it has helped me. And I really hope um, that you guys really continue to work hard, do the best you can. And I really hope that everything I kind of presented to you today can uh give you a good out, uh, outlook in terms of what the future might hold for you. So again, thank you to uh, Felipe and everybody who allowed me to speak today. I really appreciate it. Hey, Zach, thank you so much for your speech. It was very interesting. I was fascinated with everything you told us tonight, uh, mainly because like you're giving us some advice is very practical, very concrete, and um, it was very good, very good. When you were telling Thank us you. about your technician experience, this is a very good mm -hmm. point for starting. Yeah, if we can start with this experience, seeing everything in the real world, it's quite amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the yeah, the, the first job. I mean, I would say. I, to this day, I'm very blessed to have the job that I had right out of school. Um, it, it was something that, again, it, it, teach, it taught me so much. It, you know, we have lab problem solving. It, it was, like I said, I was very, very blessed to have that opportunity. And um, it's worked out very for me. Cool, very cool. And you, we can see that biomedical engineering is a kind of career. We have to have like uh, out of the box mind. Yeah, we have to think Absolutely. with a very innovative ways. And mainly, it's a very multidisciplinary uh, career. Yeah, you, you were talking about we have like a software engineering student working with you in your final project. Mm -hmm. And you also were having some contact. You're keeping in touch with nurses and physicians. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand a little bit of everything. And this is fascinating. Oh, absolutely. And even at my, my time at Siemens, even now, and also um, my first job out of school, there are plenty of times I was working with the software developers to know, hey, um, I'm seeing this issue. And in, 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 for example, in, in a monitor that we're seeing here when the, when, the page, when the application comes up, why is this happening? And then they could then sit with me and say, hey, all right, well, in this in the code here, there's this charm that could fix it or this software patch. So yeah, so it's a lot of crossover all the time, which oddly enough worked out in our design and then obviously transitioned to, to real world just out of coincidence. But yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of, lot of crossover that goes down all the time. Yes, you have to have like a deep thought on everything. Yeah, You cannot say, oh, I think that's the reason of this error or problem. You have to be sure about this because it's like patient yeah. lives. Oh yeah yeah mainly because like we have so many patients that do not know that we have so many bio, uh, engineers in the backstage but everything they are using in a hospital coming is coming like are coming from so many concepts in engineering mm -hmm. oh absolutely absolutely yeah so thank you so much here we have some questions so now this is the q a mm -hmm. time i'm going to give you the first question is coming from maya maya have uh, has a like interesting in uh, biomaterials. This is also my like I, I do love this area. Uh, her question mm -hmm. is: Do you believe that the field of biomaterials will be growing in the next few years? Do you think that this that it is a good area for research to to work on? I, I'm not. I sure would say absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. oh sure, sure. I I would say absolutely. I mean, when you look at Overall, a lot of the, the programs that you go through in biomed, I mean, the way science and research and development, it, it, the way the way science has been building, again, especially nowadays, uh, absolutely. I mean, when you look at, you know, when hospitals come through and, and you know, burn victims in particular, skin grafts, everything to that effect, um, 
yeah, especially if it's something that you're truly passionate in, um, go for it. Absolutely. I think it's going to be something that will expand and grow a hundred percent. Cool. Yeah. I do think the same. And here we also have a question. Uh, do you have any suggestion or like an advice about courses that a person uh, that wants to know more about biomedical engineering could do? Like if you, when you are graduated, which kind of course do you think we could apply and get enrolled for like having a better career? So if, I, if it's, let me get the question. So the question was if, so for somebody from out of school already talking to somebody who's going into the program, what would be like a particular class to really focus on? Yes. Uh, the question, we have like two questions. They are similar. The first one is uh, about a course to get more involved and to know more about the area. Okay. If you could like give mm -hmm. some tips about which areas could they like know more to understand better the biomedical engineering area. And the second one okay. is about when you are graduated, which kind of course do you think would be good? Okay, so like, like, like I said, um, in, in the speech, the, the two biggest classes, I think, when you're taking a biomed program, anything electrical engineering related, I mean, again, even just the basic EE 101 that we took, electrical engineering 101, uh, um, goes leaps and bounds beyond anything you can even imagine. I mean, I have colleagues, guys who were you know, way more experienced than me, simply ask me, what's Ohm's Law? Something that's so simple. If you have a mother, and you know, power line might not be working, measuring voltage, using a voltmeter, something that, you know, when you're in college, you think, oh, it's so basic and so fun. But all of a sudden, now I'm in my career and it's something that's like, hey, this is something you should know. Absolutely. Anything basic electrical engineering, very crucial, very crucial. Um, and again, anything medical device related, if you ever get the opportunity, whether it's a required course, an extracurricular course you can take, anything that can just expand your knowledge on, you know, like I said, CT, MRI, ultrasound, anything to get you a good base of the of that equipment, very huge, very big for you going down the line. Um, nice. And then you said the second part would be something to do, classes you could take once you're graduated? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't really, I mean, it, it, it's kind of, for me, it was a little bit tough just because with the company I work for, they provided classes that obviously relate directly to the equipment. Um, but I mean, in terms of that, anything, ew, that's kind of tough because um, I know once I graduated college, I didn't really want to. I didn't really want to do any more classes. Um, I was just happy to be done. But uh, I would say uh, if you're really passionate into something, if you really, really want to, like, obviously not pursue the grad school thing, but you're like, hey, hey I tried to do you know, biomechanics, biomaterials. If you find something, go for it. If you, Like I said, if you're truly into it, knowing that this field is growing the way it is, find something, go for it. Okay. Uh, do you think for the companies you are asked for getting a master's or a PhD? Um, say the one thing actually right now that I know I'm considering at least would be an MBA just because at the position I'm at, my goal is to eventually get into more managerial role. Um, and right now, my mindset has always been, I don't really want to go for extra schooling if I don't have to. So if my boss were to say, hey, we have this opening available for you, but you need an MBA, then I'd be like, okay, let's go to business school. Let's try to get a master's there, whatever the case might be. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, Zach, you have mm -hmm. other questions here, but I'd like to highlight for you that we have so many messages to say, oh, thank you so much for your speech. I did love it. And so many guys talking Portuguese or English being mm -hmm. uh, thanking you because of this. And uh, thank you so much for your time for in, like representing everyone here. Uh, I have a phrase mm -hmm. that I think is very special about your speech that is first Thank you so much for this. It's clear the passion in your voice for your job. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
And this guy, Pedro Henrique, has also a question. Do you think is it hard to work as a biomedical engineer in the United States as a Brazilian? And do you think uh, we have opportunities to work there coming from other countries? Absolutely. And I'll, I'll attest to this right away. My very first job at Siemens right out of school, I would say in our particular department, which had roughly 100, 150 people, I would say almost close to half were people all from different countries, born from a different country and came over. I mean, I've worked with I had colleagues of mine who are from China. I had multiple colleagues come over from India. Um, I mean, honestly, it was almost any country you can think of name it. And I probably worked with somebody from that country. So um, absolutely. I mean, I think regardless of where you're from, if you come in again with that BE mindset, no company you, you, you couldn't work for there. There's always opportunities that, especially at, at the big global company, you look at the, the general GEs and you look at the, the Medtronics, the Siemens. I mean, yeah, they're worldwide companies. Absolutely. If you've got, if you've got the right credential and if you can knock the interview out of the park, no, no problem. Okay, okay. Uh, we also have here a question coming from Atos, Atos Cesar. He is asking if you think like you were talking about some technical experiences and skills you should have to get uh, your job. And he's asking mm -hmm. about the soft skills. If you think when you were like uh, starting your career, if you uh, did not like which experience and skills related not to the technical area, but for the soft ones, like uh, behaviors and so forth. Do you think it was mm -hmm. important for you? And if you have any advice about this? Uh, I, 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 yeah, I think the, um, from what I can understand, what I would say is from what you're saying is like any skills that aren't technical related. So for example, yes. like speaking like mm -hmm. with, with colleagues, uh, very important very important i mean i'm sure there are jobs out there where people you can you know get shoved into a desk at research and just kind of do your own thing but um the big the big things i would say would be any sort of communication skills being able to w present in this example or even just talk with other people ways to interact um because i mean at both my jobs when i was I'm still at siemens I am constantly every day having to either email field engineers or call them or, you know, when I worked back and when I was in Illinois working for Siemens, I uh, every day talking to hardware developers, software developers, talking to colleagues, you know, presenting my stuff to risk assessment. So I think that in particular, that presenting skill, vacation skill, very, 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 because not only is the writing application important to get your point across, but also when you're, you know, in meetings or whatever, very important, very, very important, I would say. Oh, nice. And it's the kind of skill you just uh, can like make this better if you are experienced. Yeah, you have to go to mm -hmm. the field, you have to feel that and you have to propose to yourself to be like challenged. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as biomedical engineers, we're challenged literally every day from the from the moment we take that first class to the moment you have your career, you're challenged every day. And I really do think that one of the very underrated skills is that speaking communication skill. And I think the more kids can either, you know, really practice it, develop it, it is going to go a very, very long way when it comes to your career path. Yeah, cool. So, uh, Zach, because of the time, I'm going to finish the Q&A uh, uh, session, okay? So, I'm just going to give to everyone has, that has chatted here for us. Thank you so much for your phrases and points and your questions. I'm very glad for everyone that like took a time for giving us some uh, phrases and messages here. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so, Zach, thank you so much for your time. I'm very glad for having you here, as I said, like three or four times <laughs> tonight. Uh, <laughs> your speech was very interesting. I'm a very fan of you and thank you so much. So this is your time to say thank goodbye. And then I'm going to share the moment with the um, with Professor Nazaré and Professor Fabian. Absolutely. Yeah, again, Felipe, thank you very much again for the opportunity. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and again, I really do 
take it to heart because with us, both of us obviously going through the same program, I really do feel like had somebody done this, what I've hopefully done for these students, um, it, I hope it goes a long way. I hope a lot of it can stick with these kids and um, really help them develop and get through their programs. But um, again, thank you and thank you to everybody who allowed me to speak here today. Uh, it was an absolute honor of mine. So again, very much, I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Now, Professor Nazareth, so feel free to say some, some message to everyone. <laughs> Ah, Professor Nazaria, just a second, because we can see you, but we cannot listen you. Now, okay. let's try. Yeah, now I, I can hear you. Uh, after this speech, our students in our community uh, may view the, the, the good opportunities for the uh, biomedical engineer career. Then I thank very much for Mr. Zach for your uh, speech, it's very important for us. Obrigado a todos pela participação. Eu acho que começando agora com essa ótima palestra, nós temos a prova de que realmente essa semana vai ser muito especial e de que vai trazer para todos nós uma grande oportunidade de aprender bastante. É um grande abraço a todos e uma ótima semana. Participem de forma intensa, porque com certeza vocês sairão diferentes de uma semana com uma proposta tão é, completa e tão ampla como a Semana Biomédica de 2021. Um grande abraço a todos e parabéns a todos os organizadores mais uma vez. Obrigado, professor Nazaré. Obrigado por suas palavras e obrigado pela sua disponibilidade para estar aqui junto com a gente nessa abertura. Agora eu passo a palavra para o professor prazer. Fabiano. É, Mr. Zach, Mr. Zach, thank you so much. É, agradeço também a participação de todos aí que estão nos ouvindo. E reforço o convite do professor Nazaré para que vocês participem aí durante a semana e com certeza será uma semana muito rica em conhecimentos, em troca de experiências aí entre os participantes. Uma boa semana a todos. So, thank you everyone. Thank you for your time. So, now it's time for resting a little bit. Yeah, because this week is just starting. So, thank you so much everyone that's like watching us here for your comments and everything. Now we are going to finish, I'd like to say a big thank you to Gustavo because Gustavo had some problems with the technical stuff. He could not listen every uh, part of the speech, but he was amazing. Uh, so Gustavo, muito obrigado por seu tempo, muito obrigado por tudo que você fez, tá? Foi, foi fantástico, assim. A gente teve aqueles probleminhas de corte de áudio, mas mesmo assim você se esforçou demais e valeu pela ajuda, viu? Fantástico, cara, muito obrigado. Pessoal, todo mundo que está aqui, muito obrigado pelo tempo de vocês, é, muito obrigado pela disponibilidade. A gente vai passar agora um vídeo dos nossos patrocinadores que estão dando suporte a esse evento. Então, agradeço a todos, não deixem de participar da SEB, da Semana de Engenharia Biomédica. Uh, have a good night, see you soon, and we have a very long week full of, a, full of experience for everyone. Muito obrigado, pessoal. Tchau, tchau, viu? Até a próxima, a gente se vê. Saúde, segurança, confiança, qualidade. Princípios da Orbis Engenharia Clínica. Especialista em gestão de tecnologia em saúde. O resultado é o reconhecimento nacional e a segurança de cada paciente. Somos a primeira e única empresa do Brasil a receber o selo de qualificação ONA. Organização Nacional de Acreditação. Uma avaliação criteriosa feita pelo IBIS, Instituto Brasileiro para Excelência em Saúde. Uma conquista nossa, dos nossos colaboradores e clientes. Porque uma empresa acreditada tem trabalho em equipe. Orbis Engenharia Clínica. Saúde e segurança, lado a lado com você.